Oh, you mean you think I can go live? Glory. Live. Hallelujah. Welcome, everybody. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Amen. Well, we got a lot of people contacting us, reaching out, calling us. And so make sure you share this. Uh, I'm going to do a breakdown. Let me do it this way. Um, I'm going to record this on Spreaker as well. But I'm going to do a breakdown and just start off tonight. And we actually put a book together long ago called Tithing and the Future. Tithing and the Future. Now, I'm going to take Tithing and the Future and share that another time. But what I'm going to do is uh, just start off today to talk about answering a lot of people, pastors, ministers, all kinds of people connected with us apostolically, and we're going to take the subject slowly. So what I'm going to do is probably break down a couple of things, and then one of the other things is deal with first fruits, and also deal with tithes, deal with offering, uh, because every one of these things are different. And one of the big things you want to understand when we start dealing with this thing is the heartbeat. The heartbeat. I think what happens is, uh, sometimes some people can get so caught up with trying to separate the law, amen, and grace, and then they say, well, you can't mix the two. If you mix the two, then you have this problem, then you have that. And uh, the other one I want to do is I also want to do a message. I mentioned it once before, but I'm going to do it called Moving from an Open Window to an Open Heaven. Um, I think a lot of it is you have to see yourself as a, jur as a journey, and some of this, we have to look at this in a bigger perspective and really uh, catch the heartbeat of God on why God does certain things at a certain time over uh, time history. And the other thing is, we, got to, we really got to look into the heartbeat of God in this. Why does God do it? Why are these things so important? Uh, why are God's principles so important? Is there a difference between the law and principle? There are some things that can be a principle that is established before law. So principle, you'll find out that the principle, and we're going to bring that out of 10%, the tenth was actually established before we come up with the word tithe. Amen? Now some will say, well, they're different. Well, one could put one in principle, and then one could also put one in the requirements of law. So uh, some of this we have to look at very carefully and understand where we're going on this. So we're going to break some of these things down. Amen. Um, I had something that I put in my notes, and I was just going through through some things in the sense um, uh, that I saw this was very good, and it's just a basic synopsis of the truth about tithing. In Christ, we are no longer bound by the law of Moses. Have a tithing existed before the law? We're going to look at that. Abraham tithed to Melchizedek, Genesis 14, 20. We'll look at that. Uh, Hebrews 7, 6. Jacob vowed to tithe to the Lord at Bethel, Genesis 28, 22. Now, we're going we're gonna to look at that as well because we need to see what that vow is about, what the consequences of that vow and what I'm going to show you is the generational aspect of that vow. Tithing as a principle was then later codified in the law. Although the law of tithing, tithing was nailed to the cross, the principle of tithing remains, which is part of the heritage of all Abraham's descendants. And I actually had Galatians 3 and verses 29 marked. Galatians 3.29, which says... And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's descendants and heirs according to the promise. Now, there's something else about that which is very important, is that we'll see another aspect. When Abraham did anything and what Abraham ever did, one thing we have to understand that Abraham did what he did by faith. We're going to get into that with Melchizedek. Abraham responding to Melchizedek was not done by law, was done by faith. 
So Abraham gave a tenth of what he had to Melchizedek. What is the driving motive behind that? It's very important to understand that. You'll see, and I'll show you this, this was done in faith. It was done in faith. So we have to say, what precedes the other? Faith preceded obedience to the law. So we have to understand what came first. So one, to understand what's first and what's second is also very important. To understand establishing the heartbeat is very important. So on the topic of tithing, Jesus himself said uh, a lot of different things, and we'll see Matthew 23, 23. And this is where people will uh, take advantage of this one, have a different interpretation on this. So we'll break it down where he says, you should tithe, yes, but do not neglect the more important things. So that was in Matthew 23, 23. I'm just giving you a few things here um, because we will go into this deeper. Amen. There are even more important things we can discuss, but how can we move on this unless we understand the basics? Now, so we ha one of the questions we can ask ourselves, then if 10% was a requirement on the law, surely our heart should be to do much more under the dispensation of grace. So I want to focus on the aspect also of the heart should be willing to do much more according to people's teaching, on the dispensation of grace. If 10% was under the law, then the heart under the dispensation of grace should want to give way more than 10%. And so these are very important things just in the sense of setting up some of the basics. I think one of the other things is we teach a lot, and I wanted to bring this out as well, we teach a lot. When I was teaching in Romans, especially in Romans chapter... 11 and you can go to our teaching this is for those people watching some of you listen to me talk you hear me talk but you have to understand uh the resources many times i'm talking about there's many resources we can bounce off of so when we're speaking about certain things like we have you know what's it 80 90 100 hours on x 100 and some hours so even when it comes to romans we taught verse by verse. So really, you can go look up Romans, look up Romans on YouTube, and look up everything you can find under Romans chapter 11. Let me go here, um, verse 16. Because this also connects us to something that's very important where we begin to separate out the difference between first fruits and tithing and offering. But I'm doing this kind of in a reverse kind of way. So if the first handful of dough is offered, as first fruit, Abraham and the patriarchs is consecrated holy, so is also the whole mass, the nation Israel. If the root Abraham is consecrated holy, so are the branches. You say, how's this got to do with tithing? It's got to do with tracking down the heartbeat, amen, of God. Look at verse 18. Let me just do this as well, because some people, they get in this, how can I say, arrogance. Uh, about the fact that they get, you've got the group that's caught up with their Jewish ways and then people who are Greek and we know that there were certain things said in the book of Acts and we'll get into that well concerning circumcision. But the chapter that they're dealing with the book of Acts says nothing about tithing. Now you'll see this because one of the speakers recently, sometimes very famous people, oh, he was building connections between scripture which I do not see the connections. And so sometimes when one person's apostolic, sometimes another person comes along apostolic, just like uh, Paul had to rebuke Peter, remember, uh, in James, uh, uh, in the scripture, remember James chapter 1, or remember in the scripture where Paul uh, rebuked Peter in front of the people over uh, Peter not eating uh, with the uncircumcised and eating with the circumcised, and he was being partial, amen, uh, in his behavior and situations like that. So here it says, do not boast over the branches and pride yourself at their expense. There seems to be also what we call, and uh, people will get into what, I don't want to say a grace, cram uh, a grace camp. Uh, they have certain thoughts. And then what happens is religion has a way of doing this, getting people to become very dogmatic, and arrogant or, uh, you know, cocky, egotistical over certain doctrinal beliefs. And if you do not, it says, if you do boast and feel superior, 
Remember, it's not you that supports the roots, but the roots that support you. So the point of it is what I want to do is go to the roots, and the root is really the heartbeat of God. Uh, verse 19, Romans eleven nineteen. I just want you to see that. You say, branches were broken, pruned off, so that I might be grafted in. There are certain things, principles, when we look at the book of Proverbs, aspects in the old, amen, that are so powerful uh, to us, principles that work forever, proven principles. There are things in the Old Testament when you follow it, they have genuine, proven financial success. Whether we say, well, that principle or that key is bound under law. But that key, when followed, amen, with the heart of love and in faith, produces a harvest, produces success, produ is still fruitful and still producing. And people are still having results. So look at verse 20. I just wanted to bring this up because this is very important in the sense that we have to look at where we're going to go. Romans 11, 20. Amen. Uh, now look what it says. Romans eleven twenty. They were what? Quite right. They were broken off for the unbelief. But you stand by your faith. Do not be conceited, but fear. Look what it says. Do not be conceited. We're in Romans eleven twenty. Do not be conceited, but fear. Amen. So they were broken, pruned off because of unbelief, their lack of real faith. And you are established through faith because you do believe. So do not become proud and conceited, but rather stand in awe and be reverently afraid. And this is a powerful thing. Verse 21, for if God did not spare the natural branches, he will not spare you either. Behold the kindness, verse 22, and severity of God to those who follow the severity. Uh, so here we get, you really what you want to do is you want to continue in your verse 23. And they also, if they do not continue in their unbelief, will be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. How do you like that? God's able to graft them in again. So really what, what I want to do is, I, the reason I'm bringing that up is if you go through Romans 11, you catch the heartbeat of God concerning his first fruits. Let me say that the right way. Israel is his firstborn. Oh, everybody's quiet. Israel is his firstborn. But you have to also understand there's a big difference, amen, in this. Because we know there's a difference as well. Let me just mention the difference verse. And that is in Nehemiah. Let me go here one second. Jump here. Amen. In Nehemiah, and there's actually more than one verse that mentions this. But Nehemiah, and I'm just going there to show you something about sitting up just the difference here. This is where we get Nehemiah chapter 10. Nehemiah chapter 10. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go uh, into this, but step by step. Uh, this is in Nehemiah 10 verse 35. Nehemiah 10 35. And we obligate ourselves to bring the first fruits of our ground the first of all, the fruit of our trees year by year to the house of the Lord. We're obligated. Now, I'm going to show you. I want to show you something. Listen very carefully. Because still, boy, I would say 90-some percent of the churches I go to, they still, we're talking about someone right now trying to preach that you don't have to tithe or tithing is under the law. It doesn't exist under grace. And we're talking about certain things here that people are ministering and sharing. Listen very carefully what they're saying. But what they also don't understand, a lot of these people don't even understand just the basics on the difference between first fruits and tithing and the basic heartbeat behind the difference between first fruits and tithing. So if we would understand what God's intention is or what his heart is behind tithing and what his heart is behind first fruits and what his heart is behind offering, we don't quite get it. We, we, uh, let me give it to you this way. Ready? I'm just going to give it to you from my heart and then we'll get into this deeper later, but... Uh, Nehemiah chapter 10, verse 36. Amen. Now watch this. As well as all the firstborn of our sons of a cattle is written in the law. See, it's written in the law. And the firstling of our herds, flocks to bring to the house of God, to the priest to minister in his house. I think, see what it says? And to the priest to minister what? In his house. Keep in mind, this is another aspect I have to bring out. 
on why God separated the Levites, amen, from the rest of the tribes. Now, let me tell you something. There's a lot of people in ministry that aren't 100% in ministry. Hallelujah. And so there's a lot of factors there. Now watch this. Verse 37, we will also bring the first of the best of our course meal or contributions, the fruit of all kinds of the trees, new wine, oil of the priest, to the chambers of the house of God. And we shall bring the tithes. Okay, this is what I want you to see. Did you see that? We shall bring the first of the course. Now I want you to see there's a difference between first fruits and tithing. To the chambers of the house, and we shall bring the tithes from our ground to the Levites. For the Levites collect the tithes in all rural communities. Verse 37. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. Verse 38. And the priest, the son of Aaron, shall be, shall be with the Levites when they receive the tithes. And they shall bring one-tenth of the tithes to the house of the Lord, to the chambers, into the storehouse. Now, God has methodically... Uh, Tremendous instructions here. But when you look at verse 37, in Nehemiah 10, 37, and you watch God's instruction, you'll see God in Scripture several times. It's not the only place. We'll bring it further later on. Separate, like verse 37, amen. The, we shall also bring the first of our dough. Separates the first, amen, from the tithe. Well, let me give you a good example. Ready? Let me give you another one. Nehemiah, Amen. Nehemiah chapter 12, and let's go to verse 44. Nehemiah 12, 44. So let's first separate these and then look at carefully. Nehemiah 12, verses 44. Now you say, are you being very methodic? I'm laying this out apostolically and taking it step by step. On the day when men were appointed over the chambers of the store, the contributions. Look what it says here, the what? The first fruits and the tithes to gather them into the portion required by the law for the priests and Levites. So notice here, required by the law. Now, this is what I want you to see for the priests and the Levites. Here it is required by the law. And I want to show you something. Tithe existed before the law. First fruits existed before the law. First fruits is there from the foundation of the world. Jesus is the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. God set apart his first fruits. Jesus is the first begotten from the dead. He's the first fruit. He's the first lamb sacrificed. So the principle of first fruits existed in God before time was ever created. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. His son is going to become the first fruit sacrifice. The lamb slain before the foundations of the world. Which is different than tithing. And the tithes together them. Now also we have to look at the heartbeat of tithing before the law and track down the heartbeat of tithing from before the law, through the law, and into the new covenant and its future. So we want to look at the future of tithing. Is there a future for the tithe? Is there a future for first fruits? Is there a future for offering? What is the heartbeat, yeah, amen, of God? What is God trying to say to us? What is God speaking to us? Okay. Now, the other one that I want you to bring up is, let's go to Acts chapter 10. And I'm just picking one story, but I want you to see an aspect of offering, or this is not just an offering, this is just a simple story. But I want you to see how just in Acts chapter 10, a simple offering like this, I'm just picking one story, there's many we can pick, but just a simple offering like this in Acts chapter 10 could provoke such a great response to God, amen, when we look at Cornelius, amen. So when we come here and we look at Cornelius, now there was a man in Acts chapter 10, verses 1, amen, Acts 10, verses 1, and this is New Covenant, but I want you to see how important each element is. First fruits is very important to God. Tithes is very important to the heartbeat of God. Here we, there's things we can take away. There's many offerings through the Bible we can talk about. But let's take offering to an extreme side in the sense of let's just pick alms, which is also a type of an offering. 
So I'm just going to New King because I'm just looking at the heartbeat. Now in Acts chapter 10, it was a Cornel centurion man named Cornelius of what was called the Italian regiment. Look at Acts 10 verse 2, a devout man, one who feared God with all his household, who gave many alms to Jewish people, huh, and prayed God continually. Wow. Look what it says here. He gave many alms to the people. Actually, in my uh, NASB, here it says to Jewish people. <laughs> and prayed continually to God. And about the ninth hour of the day, clear, he saw, verse 3, now look at this, a vision of an angel of God just coming and said to him, Cornelius, fixing his gaze on him. Look now in verse 4. Fixing his gaze on him, what happens? He said to him, your prayers... This is Acts 10.4. Amen. Your prayers and your generous gifts to the poor have come up as a sacrifice to God and had been remembered by Him. Now this is another point I want to make. Any gift is remembered by God. Tithing will always be remembered by God. First fruits will always be remembered by God. So the principle of tithing, yes, hallelujah, is powerful. The, 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 the idea of first fruits... Trust me, it's going to get God's attention. Anything you do that has the heartbeat of God around it creates a response from God. I tell people many times, all the time, if your seed is wrapped with the nature of God, it will receive a God response. This is what happened uh, when the battle was won, and we'll see this uh, with Abraham uh, responding for this victory and coming and bringing a tithe. It was a response to the goodness of God. It was response to the deliverance of God. And at that moment, the symbols of the body and blood of Jesus, the sacrifice of Jesus was there. I, uh, he, he says, you know, we will see that as well. The elements, amen, of the bread and the wine, speaking of the sacrifice of Christ, was there present at that moment, who's with me, of the tithe and of this victory and of this divine connection with Abraham. But I want you to see something. The gifts to the poor have come up as a sacrifice to God and have been remembered by him have been what remembered by him very important now we can look at two things here before we go uh into this as well even when it comes to david we have to understand that everything that we have so we're looking yet at something bigger we're looking at something bigger please listen to me when we deal with this don't get into the uh how can i say in the methodic religious uh, uh, type of realm of this what is the heartbeat of the person doing the giving what is behind their heart when they're tithing what is behind their heart when they're giving first fruits what is behind their heart when they're sowing are they doing it because they love Jesus are they doing it because when they did it financial breakthrough happened there, there was a response from God God honored that they had breakthrough the principle worked for them uh, supernatural abundance gave I, I'm telling you uh, and we share this also in a book uh, to do with the weightiness of God and another message called Amos 913 where the plowman will overtake the reaper and the tread of grapes him that soweth seed so all those are aspects also of the supernatural multiplication and the blessings of God when the motive is right the heartbeat of right and the seed is wrapped with the nature of God so I always tell people if your seed is wrapped with the nature of God it will receive a God response. I don't care if it's first fruits, tithes, offering, alms. It will receive a God response. It's dealing with the heart of God. There's a bigger picture here. And sometimes we get dogmatic about certain subject to think we're going to help people, but there's a bigger picture. There's a bigger picture. So let me help you in this. We cannot do this in one time. It's going to take a while. The other verse that I want you to see is two verses that we use a lot. Matthew 6, we know these verses when it comes to first, but I want you, everybody knows this verse, I believe it's Matthew 6, 33. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek, aim, strive after first, all his kingdom and his righteousness. So what's in that? His way of doing and being right. His ways of doing and being right. Some people believe if some people do something by faith, Amen. That they, in their own mind, they so emphatically think is wrapped in the law and it cannot work, but it's working for the person because how do you determine his way of doing things and being right? 
you know, many times God has told me to do certain things, sacrifice certain things, sow certain things. I've had ministers place a demand on me for certain amounts. And people say, oh, I don't like it when they ask for an amount or a number. But I've seen it when I answered the amount and answered the number or the, the demand, amen, the sense of feed me first, who's with me, like the prophet Elijah uh, coming to the widow woman, and we will get into that as well. And all these things shall what? Will be given to you besides. So seek first. Here's another thing on first from a different angle. The other one we know is Proverbs chapter 3, verses 9. We know some of these things, but we've got to catch the heartbeat. We've got to catch the heartbeat. And we've got to minister out of that heartbeat. We've got to speak the truth in love that we may grow up in all things, Ephesians 4.15. So we've got to know how to connect the scripture. We've got to know how to catch God's heartbeat on these things so we can answer the body appropriately. To study, to show yourself approved, a workman in need, and not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Scripture interprets scripture. Amen. There's some people that they're big ministries, huge ministries. But that does not mean they know the word. I used to sit in 1992. I mean, there was a year one time I read the New Testament through 70 times in one year. There are entire years, 2013, 16, 17, many years where I've read the entire Bible through every month. If I've read this whole Bible through probably, who knows, I've got whole Bibles ripped apart 100 times the entire Bible through, it would, it, it's probably more than that. The point of it is there's some people trying to do something but they haven't, they're doing it from what they hear, from the environment, from the religious pressure, from what they're yielding to concerning a certain line of teaching. Believe it's going to bring people total freedom, but yet they're still not catching. Uh, I don't, I'm not sure why they're not still catching the heartbeat of God on these things, why they get religiously adamant about certain things, but that does not help anybody. The other one is Proverbs 3 verse 9. Proverbs 3, verse 9. Now I'm going into certain verses. We'll come back to Proverbs. If I remember the verses, Proverbs chapter 3, 9. It's going to say this, a similar kind of thing. And that's not under the law yet. That's not talking about law stuff yet. It's just talking about Proverbs. Amen. Just giving basic strategy, counsel, advice. Let me find it. Proverbs 3 and verses 9. It says, honor the Lord from your wealth, from the first of all your produce. Amen. Proverbs 3 9. Honor the Lord. Amen. Honor the Lord from your wealth. So, honor the Lord from your wealth. Honor the Lord with your capital sufficiency. That's not. And with the first fruits of all your income. Now, keep in mind again, let me say something. Oh, you have to lay this out. I'm going to tell you this first fruits is not tithing. So now we have to understand the heartbeat. Honor the Lord with your first fruits of all your income. First dedication. First consecration. Amen. Very, very important to understand this principle. And look what happened. Verse 10. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Look at that. So your storage places will be filled with plenty. Your vats will overflow with new wine. That is a fact. That is a fact when you honor God first. I'm just focusing on the heartbeat first. So the other one I want to look at is, go with me. I love this one, Second Chronicles. Let me do this one. This is so good. I was in the middle of Brazil, man. I was preaching this up, like up a storm one time. Amen. Let me see if I got the right place here. Um, no, let me go to First Chronicles 29. That's what I want. First Chronicles, amen, 29, and I want you to see something here. Yeah? This is King David, and I want you to catch his heartbeat. I want you to just catch his heartbeat. This is First Chronicles 29, let's go to verse 3 first, amen. Remember this now. Moreover, because I have set my affection on the house of my God. I have set my affection on the house of God. It's, the reason I'm saying this verses is if you're a preacher, don't, how can I say, don't take, don't preach something that takes the affection of the house of God out of people. Don't teach something that takes the affection for the house of God out of people. 
in addition to all I have prepared for the Holy House. The body of Christ has gone through too much in the last two years. Too much stuff. And we need to be very clear with doctrine. Hallelujah. So I'm apostolically laying this down. Now look at this. Watch what David. David is so excited. Verse 9. First Chronicles 29, verse 9. Now I bring this specific verse up in a book called The Weightiness of God as well, but it's very important. The people rejoiced because these had given willingly for with a whole and blameless heart they had offered freely to the Lord. I want you to see the key here. What are we doing here first? Heart. What did they do? They offered holy and blameless, amen, heart they had offered freely to the Lord. They what? A whole and blameless heart. A whole and blameless heart. Oh, no restrictions in giving when it comes to the heart, when the heart's right. Who's with me? When the heart's right, 10% is nothing. You'll want to go for 20, 30, 40, 50, 100%. When the heart's right. When the heart's right, you're not going to fight against 10%. When the heart's right, you're not going to be beating up the tithe. Hallelujah. Amen. You're not going to beat up people who are doing some kind of giving. But at the same time, we're not going to bring guilt and fear on people, and we'll bring that out as well. Some people have used sometimes tithing as a form of manipulation, and they've put guilt and fear. They've connected guilt and fear to it. That is not the way you teach the principle. The problem is because they put guilt and fear to it, and they don't understand how to, how to uh, how can I say, look at tithe through the right heartbeat, amen, and see it in relationship before the law, through the law, and into the future, and they cannot see the clear motive or desire or where God's really going on this subject, then, then they begin to get emphatic and focus on being hurt. What I, a lot of times ministers, let me explain this. I know a minister one time, he, he, he was so upset that his father died and never accepted Jesus Christ as his Savior. It hurt him so badly. He was a famous preacher. He was packing out the stadiums. He was famous in America. He's on every TV station. He was cooking. And because of a situation to do with family, it affected him so greatly, he changed his theology and he began to teach this thing called the theory of inclusion. And before you know it, he was saying, everyone's saved. And so sometimes what happens is if we're listening to certain influences, amen, from one side of the religious, let's say, camp or religious area coming from, and then we listen to influences from another side, some people can draw so much from one side, they get very dogmatic and arrogant on that side. That's why I brought up Romans chapter 11. This, Paul was dealing with this in the sense of the, the, the people coming into total freedom, who's with me. They were coming in the Lord Jesus Christ. They were free. They were full of the Holy Ghost, talking in tongues. They were uncircumcised. They were loving Jesus. But at the same time, he was telling them, hey, don't dog and I beat up that Jewish person who's with me. I remember the roots from whence your faith came. Don't be arrogant towards them. Don't get egotistical and pride because of where you are in your theology or what you believe. Be very careful how you deal with that thing. You've got to be very sensitive. And so this is something that's very important to learn, this kindness, gentleness. I brought this out just the other day, even in when I was teaching in Hebrews chapter 5 about Paul's gentleness uh, of his approach towards people. Now, look what David says here as well. Let me bring this up here. First Chronicles chapter 29, and let me go from verse 17. First Chronicles 29, 17. I'm focusing here mainly here on just the heartbeat. The heartbeat here. Amen. Hallelujah. First Chronicles 29, verse 17. I know also, my God, that you try the heart. You what? You try the heart. And delight in uprightness. Some people, when they minister in something, I'm so glad when God gives a, a person a revelation and they admit they've made mistakes and they're learning. That is good. Amen. That is good. We don't take it away from that. Amen. Uh, in uprightness of my heart, I freely offered all these things. And now I've seen with joy your people who are present, you're offering voluntarily and freely to you. Boy, they're following this heartbeat of David. Verse 18. I love this. It's so powerful. O oh Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, Israel, our fathers, keep forever such purposes. Now we're going to go into this Abraham, Isaac, Israel was Jacob when he wrestled with God. His hip was knocked out of place. Remember, God changed his name to no longer Jacob, but Israel. So, so David's acknowledging this transition. 
Amen. This transition. And what we're going to do is we'll see this because we'll look into the vow of Jacob concerning his tenth he made to God. And our fathers keep forever such purposes, thoughts in minds of your people. Notice who he's mentioning. Abraham connected. Who's with me? Notice who he's mentioning. Isaac. Amen. He's connecting people who know how to give. Know how to give. Who's with me? Know how to make. Come on, who's with me? He's going back to their lifestyle. Keep forever such purposes, thoughts in mind. He's dealing with heartbeat of your people and direct and establish their hearts towards you. So if we get dogmatic on a subject and we're not establishing people's hearts towards God, but we're getting so caught up with stuff, amen, it doesn't help the situation. Amen. Hallelujah. So once again, we see the idea of heart. And this is why I want you to understand that when we do something, we've got to do it with all our hearts. And we've got to understand how some of these things were started. Amen. Now, th this thing becomes a very important thing. And what we'll do is we will go into really what I want to do is start off just talking about first fruits. You say, why? Because first fruits is the very thing we're going to deal with when we start off is, is we find this with Cain and Abel and we'll carry on. And we'll talk about the heartbeat behind first fruits. Then what we need to do is we need to talk about the heartbeat behind everything that happened in relationship, amen, to the tithe and Melchizedek. What is that important? Why is that important? It's mentioned again in Hebrews. Why is tithe mentioned? It is mentioned in the New Testament. It is mentioned in the New Testament. And, and it's mentioned in the book of Hebrews. That's one of the most powerful books. Right now we're on what? Hebrews chapter 5 right now, teaching on Hebrews. The other thing is, is the other part is we're going to talk about Jacob's vow, that tenth. That is a very important thing because that's going to connect us. If you don't understand Jacob's vow, the tenth, that is something he made a promise to do, not something that's enforced upon him. And this is what God is speaking about when he says, you have robbed me with tithes and offerings. A lot of people don't understand. What is he talking about there? He's talking about the vow of Jacob. Now, if you don't connect the dots clearly and you don't understand what he's relating there in Malachi chapter 3 to the seed of Jacob, then you're going to connect it all. You're going to, how can I say, you're going to connect some things to the law because you don't have clarity on its roots. And if you connect it to the law and not to the right roots, it's like you're only going so deep, but not all the way. Let me teach you, but I only know so much. Now, that's another thing people preach where they're at. They preach what they know, and they're doing the best they know. But if they're influential, and they're huge, and they have a massive platform, their impact is great, especially with those who are ignorant of the Scripture and do not understand apostolic alignment and how to align clearly with spiritual fathers and connect financially clearly. And not everybody's a Melchizedek in your lot. Not everybody has a divine alignment. The other thing is tithing, we'll see, is not connected to an institution. It started off by and be connected to a person. Connected to a person. We have to understand that connection as well because people are, if you start connected to an institution and you bind it in the parameters of your thoughts within the law, and you've got this law conscience and great conscience on this side, but now you're binding this principle only within a law consciousness, amen, and you're not understanding that tithing is not connected to it was connected to a person. It began by being connected to a person, not an institution. And that's a very good thing. So you've got to take it out of the institutionalized stuff and put it in its proper place. Very important when it comes to that as well. So then uh, it's like after that, we can begin to actually go into the New Testament and find out exactly what happens in the New Testament and how we deal with finances in the New Testament or whether tithing has a place in the future or not uh, in relation to the New Testament, where God really wants to go. So that'll bring me to another message called moving from open windows to an open heaven. So I'm going to separate in this into several different messages, so that way you won't miss any details. I know we laying it down very uh, carefully. Hallelujah. I hope that helps you and blesses you. Let me just share this short part today just to give you a starting on what we're going to do. Don't miss what we're going to say coming up, because we'll begin to break it down. Amen? Break it down. And, and so we're really going to get into this subject. Father, I just thank you for every person watching and listening. I'd give them clarity, Lord, in these areas. Help them understand the difference 
between tithes and first fruits and offerings and really help us, Lord, to understand your heartbeat behind what is being said. Because I know that you said the pure in heart will see God. So I thank you for pure hearts. I thank you for ability to see clearly into your word. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're going to instruct us. You're the counselor. You're the helper. Thank you for instructing us and helping us to bring revelation, to uh, explain this revelation, bring it out to the people. And we just thank you for that, Father, right now in the name of Jesus. All right, we love you tonight. We bless you. Go to our website, swordministries.org, backslash give. You can go to Zill, PayPal, Cash App, sow a seed, respond to the revelation received. When we minister on finances, it's very important that you sow something. It's very important that you sow a seed, that you connect to the revelation. Amen? Because there's, there's divine connections, supernatural miracles that happen when we build the right anointed connections with the right heartbeat from God. Amen? We love you all. We bless you tonight. In Jesus' name, amen.